I personally believe that one of the most important things you can do to strengthen your network is to have a proper backup protocol in place. Maybe you're backing up your files on a network storage server or even to an external USB drive or something like that. But what do you do when you completely lose a system? I personally don't want to spend the time installing a new operating system, getting drivers, getting everything configured, getting all of the software reinstalled on that system just so I can use it again. It's a lot of time down the drain. Today, I'm going to go over a piece of my backup protocol. It's the Clonezilla Live ISO. It can be run from a USB stick and you can use it to easily back up and restore entire system images. Okay, so if you have never made a Linux Live USB stick, we're going to go through how to make this one. And I recommend that even if you are not a Linux user, if you only ever make one bootable Linux USB drive in your life, this is the one that I recommend. This is so handy to use, even if you are not a Linux user. As far as using this to create backups, this tool is an absolute lifesaver. All right, so to get started, head over to clonezilla.org and click on Download. Click on Stable. And in this case, the CPU architecture that we want is actually i686. This is going to make it backwards compatible with older PCs. Choosing AMD 64 only makes it compatible with modern 64-bit processors. The file type that we want is ISO and download. If you've watched my video on how to make the Ultimate USB Toolkit and multi-boot ISO installer, you can just drop this ISO directly into a Linux folder. But if you don't care about a multi-boot USB installer and you just want to do this as a one-off, Head over to pendrivelinux.com and download the universal USB installer. Easy as one, two, three. On this page, scroll down to where it says download UUI. Once you've finished downloading the universal USB installer, launch it and select I agree. Select the distribution from the download that you want to put on the USB. In this case, it's Clonezilla. And with this particular distribution, we're actually given the option to download the link through this program. And that's something that I always forget about. I guess old habits die hard. I just always go download the ISO first and then run this program. So I'm going to browse to my download location and load up the ISO here. I'm going to select the drive letter of my USB, which in this case is USB drive F. You want to make sure that you select the proper USB on this step. If you have more than one USB device plugged into your machine at this time and you select the wrong USB drive, I'm warning you now, it's going to overwrite that drive, reformat it, and it's going to write whatever Linux distro you have selected to that disk. So make sure you select the proper USB drive at this point. Once you hit the create button, there is no going back. So after that, we hit create. It's going to warn you about everything that I just said about your drive being formatted and overwritten. If you're ready and if you're positive that that is the drive that you want to overwrite, click yes. This part takes a few minutes, anywhere from about mm, two to five minutes. So I'm going to fast forward through this part. And at this point, we can remove that USB stick and we are ready to use Clonezilla. Okay, so this little box right here, this Asus Chrome box, is the backbone of my network, and I love this little thing. I upgraded to a much bigger M2 hard drive in this thing. I think it's around 120 gig, and this is running Lubuntu. I've got a couple of external hard drives that I plug into this thing. This is my storage server. This is my media server. I do so much with this box that if I were to lose this thing, I would be in bad shape. And what I want to do is back this thing up in case there's ever a problem because this thing has been running like a sweetheart lately and I want to make sure that I have a good backup of this. If I ever lose it, I can just put this image back on and be good to go. So to do this, I've got my keyboard and it's plugged in right here. I've got an external drive because what we're going to do is read the contents of the drive that's in here and make an image of that drive that sits here. And if we ever need to restore that, we can restore it from the image on this drive to this machine. This is the Clonezilla thumb drive that I made earlier. So we're gonna plug this in right now. I'm gonna power it on. I'm gonna meet you guys at my computer 
And just like Jeff Foxworthy, we're going to get her done. I'm running a custom firmware on this Chrome box. So when I start this up, I want to start tapping Escape for the boot settings. I want to go down to Boot Manager. I want to go down to USB Device 1, I believe. Okay, maybe it's EFI USB device. There we go. Now that we're in Clonezilla, I almost always go with the first option. If you have problems getting Clonezilla to boot, maybe because of graphics settings in that computer, you can go down to other modes of Clonezilla, but in the 10 years that I've used this system, I've only really had to do that maybe once. For the most part, you're just going to select Clonezilla Live default settings. Okay, now this is what Clonezilla looks like after it boots. It's going to have you go through and set up your keyboard. So hit enter here keep the default keyboard. I always keep the default. We're going to start Clonezilla. We're going to do device to image. Now we got a couple of options here. We can do device to image where we work with disks using images. We want to do a backup image here. That's what we're going to do. Now if you wanted to clone this drive directly to another drive you could do device to device where you basically just make an image to a new drive. What we want to do is make a backup for putting this image on a drive at a later point in time. So I'm going to choose device image. We're going to use a local device. The local device that we have is that big external USB hard drive that I plugged into the back of the Chrome box you do have the option to go through and set up an NFS server or Samba server or anything like that if you want to write it to a location on your network. Totally up to you. I always do it this way and then copy the image to a storage server later because it's just an easier way for me to do it. It's telling you to insert the storage device into this machine now if you want to use that then wait for it to be detected. I've already done this. So it's seeing SDA right now. That's the internal drive on this machine that I want to clone. And it's seeing SDC. That's the device that I want to write the image to. So now we hit Control C to exit this window. Now we need to mount a device as the home repository. What we're going to do now is we want to make sure that we mount the external drive because that's what we want to write to. We come down to the drive that we want to mount, which in this case, it's this one. It's the 2 terabyte external drive. And we hit enter. Now we want to mount the directory that we're going to write the image to. At this point, I always just scroll over to done. That will write it to the root of this drive. We hit enter to continue. It's fine to just choose beginner mode here. Now I'm going to back this disk up as an entire image. You have the option to write just the partitions to an image. And if you want to explore that later on your own, feel free to do so. But we're going to keep it in easy mode right now. We're just going to save the entire disk as an image. Here's where you name your image. I'm going to name this Chromebox and I'm going to put a date stamp. Today is 5-16-2020 and then hit OK. Now it's going to go through and list the hard drives that are in this machine that are not mounted as your home device. In this case, we only have one, so that makes this choice very easy. This is the hard drive that we want to clone in this instance. If you have multiple devices, you choose the device that you want and hit your spacebar to put the asterisks in the brackets. Since we only have this one, that's already done for us. We hit enter. Here we choose the compression option that we want. I'm just going to stick with the default. Here you can choose to skip checking, repairing the source file system if you want. I've done this hundreds of times and I always go with this option and this has always been fine. After the image is saved, do you want to check the image? Again, I always just check yes here and everything has always worked out fine for me. This is where you can choose whether you want to encrypt the image or not. I'm not going to encrypt the image. 
And here's what we choose what we want Clonezilla to do after it has written the image. I'm just going to go with the default here. Here it's telling us the commands that it's going to use. We press enter to continue. This has got everything set in motion for us now. Here it's asking us if we're sure if we want to proceed. In this case, I do. Everything is correct. Again, are you sure you want to continue? Here, type Y for yes. And now it's going to write that image to our external hard drive. Okay, so now I'm putting my money where my mouth is. I'm booting back into the Chrome box again. And I'm going to use that image to restore this machine. Now I'm going to boot up Clonezilla. I'm going to pretend that I lost this Chrome box. I've rebuilt it and now I need to restore its contents. I'm going to walk through the process of restoring the image to the internal hard drive. So again, we have our default keyboard layout. We're going to start Clonezilla. And since we're restoring an image to the device, we're going to work device-image. We're going to use a local device. We've already got our devices mounted, so we're going to hit Control c here to exit this window. Otherwise, this is where you would plug them in. We need to mount our home device again. Again, this is going to be our external hard drive, which is this one right here. This might get a little bit confusing for some people. It's going to ask us what the directory that we want to use that the Clonezilla image is stored in. Now, we see the Clonezilla image here, but the directory that we want to use is actually the directory above that, which is root which is this directory. So we're not going to select this. We're just going to come over to done. We hit enter to continue. We're going to use beginner mode. So in the last process, we saved a disk. In this process, we're going to restore a disk. So this is where it finds our Chromebox image. It's the only image on this hard drive, so it's the only one to select right now. If you have multiple images saved on a disk, this is where you would select the image that you want to use. But since this is the only one that we have, we're just going to hit OK. And this is the target disk that we're going to overwrite. This is where you have to be really careful to make sure that you have everything set up properly. We want to restore this image to the 128 gigabyte internal drive on this machine. This is the only option we have to select a disk right now, so we want to make sure this is correct. When you select this drive, it's going to put things in motion to overwrite everything on this disk. So be very careful and make sure you have the proper image going to the proper disk. When we're done, we can choose to reboot, shut down. I always go with the default here. Hit enter to continue, and now it's writing the image back to the default hard drive on this machine. Now it's going to finish restoring the image to the disk. This can take a little while depending on the speed of your computer versus the size of the image versus the size of your hard drive. There are a lot of things to factor in on how long it will take. Alright, so it's finished restoring the image to the disk. I'm going to power off now. I'm going to remove both the Clonezilla drive and the USB hard drive. And I'm going to power on the Chrome box. If I did everything right, we should see this thing boot to Lubuntu. And, and everything looks good. There's our load screen, that's a good sign. There's our cursor. System is fully booted, we are good to go. I hope you found something useful here that can perhaps save you some time and maybe a headache later down the road. If you like this video, consider subscribing. It really helps the channel grow. That's it for now, and I'll see you next time.